Okay, welcome to GSOC meeting with Jenkins. We have a number of project proposals and a number of students and mentors online with us today, which is great. Hopefully we'll get slayed in. We're just discussing. Hopefully we'll get slayed in to mentor. <laughs> which is good. Yeah, yeah, sure, definitely. <laughs> have you had a chance to look at the, the proposals that are up on our listing? And then we also have an additional one that Vibab has put in. On the tech yeah, market. yeah, I, I seen the one, you know, the, the cloud events. So I've been in the cloud native, um, you know, the SIG for a long time. And um, that that's one area that interests me. And uh, I've not had a chance to talk with, I had a chance to talk with WebHub a long time ago, but then I got busy. So um, that's one, uh, you know, that's one project that I'm looking forward to, you know. You know yeah, around. definitely. And the, the cloud native um, SIG is, is every Friday. So, or yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Friday. I'll hop so in on one of those. To yeah, you, you, you'll see me uh, from now on, you'll see me. Okay, exactly. awesome. Good. Glad to hear it. Good. And Cigar was looking into a number of things from, from last week um, related to Jenkins and getting used to Jenkins, but has has had to study. So it's a little bit, uh, that's, that's more than more than okay. We're very happy that you prioritize your studies. Um, do we have any other questions from our students on the call or mentors? We have some new new individuals on the call today, which is great. Uh, Nilma, if you'd like to introduce yourselves, that would be that would be wonderful. I'm Kara Dramak, and I work um, with the Jenkins Project, helping to organize GSOC. Uh, I am willing to introduce myself. Uh, I'm part of the part of the Jenkins Project, have been for a while, and delighted to be part of it. It's been a lot of fun. Last year's Google. Google Summer of Code experience for me was my first. And it was intense and interesting. And we did some pretty bold things. And, and it was a lot of fun. And we've shipped those bold things. So really, really pleased. Thank you very much for being willing to contribute. Thank you very much for, for being willing to help us do interesting things in Jenkins. So do we have any questions from, from the attendees of this meeting on any of the proposals or how to make a proposal or how to work on a project idea to develop your own proposal? This is a good time to ask. <laughs> um, yeah, um, so um, so far I'm from last week, um, Mark suggested me to look into that project and I looked into that project and, but when I tried to run, I faced some errors um, but maybe I still have to figure out more um, on that um, pipeline step doc generator. Um, but um, so should I have to just um, currently um, little bit concerned about how to make proposal or just sh currently should I just in this fab should I just uh, focus on okay um, that's what I need to do more um, on the exploration front or or is it is it I mean. Uh, sh should I focus on how I need to lay down the pr proposal also, or is it fine to for this fab um, to explore more? Um. I think your exploration work is is really important and will be foundational for the work you do with GSOC, and mm -hmm. really it will help you make your proposal. So the proposal is you take a project idea and you really develop it as your own, um, and it, you know we want it to be something that you're very excited to work on. So hopefully the exploration work that you're doing will help you uh, yeah, that finding sense. that you can, you space. Can, and you. So sorry for interruption, uh, mm -hmm. uh, but you can, um, like what I did uh, that, that kind of uh, helped me in, in, in my GSOC last year, it was my first time, you know, just like Mark, so it was a crazy experience. Uh, but what you can do is when you're exploring, you can put those things in a doc um, and you know, whoever is your mentor, whoever it may be, you can just share that doc or you can even put it in the public um, SIG channels, I mean, whichever is pertaining. Uh, so that, if, you know, it shows that you've, you've done your background research um, and it helps you make your proposal stronger. Um, so just keep documenting bugs, errors, whatever. You can even maintain a, mm -hmm. you know, a log, a daily log of what you've done. Um, uh, that, that helps as well. Um, uh, speaking of that, um, la like last year you contributed, but I know what to do in that project, every, you know, um, st steps, but I don't know what to do in code, in code part. Um, so, um, so you are at that time when we are making the proposal, so sh you have 
mention all the coding part what you are going to do in each and every week do you already have all that mindset already be, is it not necessarily you don't need to know every single thing uh, first of all you're starting quite early so that's a good thing and uh, if you're starting early you have a fair idea of what uh, needs to be done uh, my proposal last year had a lot of coding because i knew because the project was pretty familiar to me uh, but if you see other proposals they not necessarily included code snippets so if you have the time and you know you can always introduce pseudo code like just what's in your head that this week i'm going to you know write this parser or this you don't have to go in de detail about how the parser is going to work but you just can write down hey this is my parser or this is where i'm going to put the parser in you know it shows that you know like a surgeon where exactly what thing goes and as the time progresses trust me you will know what that what what exactly the parser is going to do as you reach the deadline and you can just put it in there that will help your proposal uh, makes sense so it seems you are kind of telling me like just make a kind of prototype like olex said to me i believe few weeks back yeah makes sense yeah I, yeah well and, and it accepts that that many of the things that you're you're working that you're looking at now will be in the i don't know category right and and that's perfectly reasonable for you to say i don't know how this works and i don't know how this works and i don't know how this works and i'm going to explore a narrow part of one of my i don't knows and learn something mm -hmm. about it and then explore another narrow part and and you get to choose which so so I think I think for instance, Segar, you you're a good example of one of the one of the parts was, hey, how does this how does this REST API specification generator actually get invoked? How is it run? And and the exploration on pipeline steps doc generator is one mm -hmm. one way it might be invoked. So, oh, okay. So exploring that one one question is a is a good okay, how would this thing be run? Now there's still the question like where will it be displayed where where will the results be presented mm -hmm. and what tool will be used to present the results and and generate the pages for it and, and each of those for me is a is a is sort of a separate topic of i don't know and i have to I have to decode it i have to understand it mm -hmm. so so i think exploration like that it's okay to stop an exploration and say i don't know everything but i know a lot more than i did before and i think mm -hmm. i will understand it reasonably yeah um, makes sense um, when um, when pre this uh, when previous week when i explored that project i mean it doesn't making any sense currently that code um i mean how could i i mean um trying to make sense out of that source code because i don't know currently anything about that source code that pipeline um so what do you suggest me to how should i start looking into i start looking into from the main function and then i reading the code and okay this is calling this this is making instance and and but it doesn't making any sense to me currently to be honest um, um, yeah and uh, and that particular area we might actually enlist the help of one of the original creators of it and just have a session Kristen Whetstone oh, okay. who created yeah, that, that um, mm -hmm. may be willing to say hey let's have a 15 minute mm -hmm. session 20 minute session to talk about what does it do and how does it do it and Kristen's been she was a mentor last year I believe she's been a mentor in years prior she was a Google season of Docs mentor as well so so I think we might just be able to get her to to offer us a coaching session to to review the structure of the thing so that you get a handle of, oh, oh this is what's happening and this is why it's doing it that way so oh, yeah that makes sense and uh, i texted oleg also maybe i mean he's busy um yeah he's well and and, and chris that's that's why i recommend kristen oleg oleg okay. is universally capable he's, he can do all sorts of amazing things but kristen actually wrote the original code in mm -hmm. that particular thing and because she wrote the original code we could ask her and i suspect mm -hmm. she'd say oh sure i'm happy to come have a session and let's talk yeah um yeah i will then text her maybe next week maybe if she yeah, if she is available yeah 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 and that that that's a that's a at least for me it's an easy thing to try for this session next week we ask hey kristen could you come talk to us about pipeline doc step uh, pipeline steps doc generator because it may be an uh, a framework we would use to do the next thing the rest api spec generator mm -hmm yeah that will be a good yeah until i'm just um, looking at the source code yeah.
I um, I've just been um, messaging with Nilma in the in the chat. Um, Nilma was asking about the projects that are listed right now for GSOC, and so we have we currently have five on our Jenkins GSOC page, but um, and I can put the link actually in, in the chat so you all have it. Um, in addition, there's another draft one uh, that we were speaking of before the meeting. Um, that's on the Tecton client plugin and Vibab has proposed it on the Jenkins GSOC mailing list. So you can see it there for now. It should be PR relatively soon. It's, it's an interesting project. But in addition, um, students are welcome to take these proposed ideas and, and really make them their own. So they, they work on something that is good for the Jenkins project, but is really in their area of interest. Um, and you are not in any way constricted to these. If there is something else you're interested in, in um, working on and proposing for your application, we can help you. Uh, we can help you, you know, in the community, we'll try and help find mentors for you. You will, we will need to, um, you will need to have a well spec um, application and proposal, but, and you will need to have ideas of who your mentors could be, but we can help you develop that and organize that. So, just to let you know, it's not it's not a constraint. You have a lot of creative freedom, and it is a really a moment for you to 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 do something interesting and creative and contribute to open source through the Jenkins project. So, and Kara, if if you're willing, I could take some time and introduce some more details about one of those ideas with Sladen on the line and Nilma. I would love to try to persuade both of them that this is the best idea of the five. <laughs> sure, that would be great. <laughs> Go for it, Mark. So, so I'm going to share my screen and let's take a look at it, if that's all right. So on, you should see my screen and on the Jenkins IO site in sub projects, Google Summer of Code, GSOC 2021 project ideas. And here we've got this one. So it's get credent credentials binding for SH, BAT and PowerShell. And I need to add additional mentors onto this one. Uh, this is the number three most requested enhancement in, in the Jenkins project right now. It's got the most number, it's third place in number of votes on the Jenkins bug tracker. And so um, for me, there's, there's significant interest in doing this. Uh, the, the bug report that tracks it is right here. Pipeline step to run git commands, and you can read that in detail. But what the idea is, is that Jenkins users uh, sometimes need more powerful access to the git command line than the git plugin adds. They may need to use um, different settings than the Git plugin supports. They may need to use different techniques than the Git plugin supports. They may need to insert calls to Git at places or to do things that the plugin just doesn't allow. For example, they may say, I would like to be able to push a change to this repository and to this other repository. I would like to check out two or three. And when I do the checkout, I need these very specific command line options. Um, all of that we could we could conceptually do by making the git plugin increasingly more complicated or as proposed here what we would create is a credentials wrapper that allows the user to state the credentials they want to use and then use any git command inside an sh bat or powershell step so the idea is that that many Git operations need credentials. And many of those credentials and those credentials are known to Jenkins, but we don't want them shared outside the Jenkins credential system. So what the idea is, you will, we will take a, a wrapper. Let's see if we've got the example here. Oh, it's not in the, there isn't a picture of the syntax. So let's look at the original draft document that I had assembled because it has a, uh, a, a sample that shows 
how you'd use these various options to pass in. Let's see, Jenkins, oh, there it is, good. Okay, so let's look at the mailing list discussion. And here's the Google Doc. So no example here either. Oh, that's sad, Kara, shame on me. All right, so there, there, this is what, what it's doing is taking the Jenkins technique called with credentials and let's find that pipeline step. Okay, this plugin, the credentials binding plugin, allows us to do things like this, where we say, using the following credentials, I want to run these shell commands. And, and the idea here is that we need some way of saying to with credentials that the thing we're going to pass to it is intended to be a git credential which means it uses git ask pass and it sets private keys in the right locations and it knows how to do pass phrases and those kinds of those kinds of adjustments will then allow users to use this with credentials and instead of this set plus x they'll say git push something or git um, tag or git clone and and it will use those credentials in that git operation so the the challenging and interesting part here is not so much the code because the code that's needed to do this actually already exists in many ways we've got we've got code that shows how to do with credentials knows how to do it and knows how to set environment variables like this environment variable and knows how to write files but what we need is someone who will take those those samples of existing code and use them specifically to check that command line git is behaving as it should with those credentials and that means command line git needs to behave as expected when working with git 1.8 on centos 7 and get 2.30 on Debian testing and all the versions in between. So, so for me, this one is a, it's an interesting challenge in testing and it's a relatively straightforward coding activity before we get into the, oh, we need to do this massive set of testing to be sure it works in all the expected places. Now, hopefully you're all persuaded, oh yes, this is exactly the best project choice. Mark's got it. And if you're not, I'm happy to keep shamelessly trying to, trying to persuade you. Okay, so did that, did that help? Are there questions? Yeah, that, that was a good demo, Mark, yeah. It, it looks like for me, first time looking at it, that was, yeah, that's a lot of information to process. But yeah, I'll definitely read the doc and, you know, see if I have some ideas. Mark, as you've mentioned testing so much, I, did you have opinions on how this should be tested? Do you want to speak to that? Yeah, well, I, I assume that, that the testing, the plan to test it would include interactive checks because human beings use this and we want to check it the way they would do it. But then if issues are found, so let's see, I guess I should describe it first. I assume that any code you write, you write starting with tests as the first activity, right? We think about, okay, how do we do it? And being test driven is very healthy. So, but usually when I'm writing test driven code, I fail to think of all the other places that I should have tested and I discover problems interactively that I then have to go back and add more tests. So, so for me, the, the, the usual experience is I start with a little bit of code and a few unit tests and then I test it interactively and then it shows me that I didn't understand the interactive code and I clearly didn't understand how to write the test. So I need to write more interactive, more code and I need to write more tests and I just iterate on those and, and in this case, this one will require someone with some Docker experience or Docker, use Docker to run various, various distributions of Linux 
I need to see how does it feel to run CentOS 7? How does it feel to run Debian 10 with these various versions of Git? And it's a good thing to learn. Docker, Docker, running a Docker image, either on your Windows computer or on a Linux computer, on a Mac computer is a great experience because it helps you see which, which things I can get without having to actually change my computer. I, I can still, I can have the full experience of CentOS 7 and not be running anything but my Windows computer. So did, did that answer your question, Cara, or uh, did I do a bad job of answering the question? No, no, it was a great presentation. Good, good answers. Um. <laughs> it's like our no, talker no, is awesome. We, yes, it is. <laughs> no, no, we have, we have been joined by one more and, and Rick is actually from, if I recall correctly, Rick, you're based in, in a piece of China, right? So, so your, your time zone is rather uncomfortable for this time of, of night or day that you're in. Thanks for being with us, Rick. Yeah, I, I, I hope I can participate in the, the, the meeting in later. Yeah, I, I'm based uh, in China, uh, in, in Beijing. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you, Ed, and welcome. So the Rick Rick has been a key leader in the Chinese localization special interest group, and in assuring that that Jenkins is is in wide use throughout China. We're delighted. It's it's marvelous. Thank you very much, Rick, for your contribution there. You're welcome. Yeah. Also, Rick was uh, Rick was my mentor last time for the and one of the you know the core people who brought up the custom distribution service idea. So yeah, excellent mentor. Thanks, Rick. Nice, good to hear. Rick, would you be interested in mentoring this year? Because <laughs> we hear you're such an excellent mentor. <laughs> um, I just uh, try to catch up with you guys, so uh, I will take take a look at the the, the project proposals. If I am interested in one of them, I will talk to you. Thank you. Absolutely, that's great. And you're welcome to propose one as well, should you wish to. Um, but yeah, we, we look forward to your involvement. Yeah, of course, of course. And Cara, I've got another project idea in mind from, from that was not accepted in last year's set but I think is still a viable idea. It's a Git, Git caching system that Jim Klimov from the Czech Republic actually has, has been working on something related to it recently, has done some very good in investigation, has a code proposal in, and I think, I think we may have even more opportunity this year. So, but that's probably at least a week away before I'm ready to submit it. Excellent, that would be great, Mark. Yeah, I am. I am thinking of submitting one two on a Docker file builder. I I had a play and it was really fun to do. And and then we were discussing it um, with the team and and it was it was suggested as maybe a good good GSOC project. Um, so I might put that together too because Docker is awesome. <laughs> uh, Kara, I had a question. Is is Jenkins X participating this time? Or no? No, sadly not. And it's mostly to do with mentors because it's, it's quite hard to find, you know, we want to make sure the students are really well supported. Um, and so we, we just need, we need more than one mentor per project and we need to yeah, make yeah. sure everyone's prepared to offer enough time to really support the students. So we were I don't think that Jenkins X will be participating this year, which is oh. you know, quite unfortunate, but. No yeah, they've, they've been they've been deeply involved in getting Jenkins X3 ready to go general availability and and Google Summer of Code just can't sacrifice that we can't sacrifice that for for their getting it ready to ship. Yeah, James is it the James Rollings and James Strachan have been very, very focused on three. They're very excited about it. It looks and, and it's an amazing piece of work. They are <laughs> they are impressive at every level. Yeah. 
Are there any, okay, let me, let me ask a question for, and it, I'm not saying you're, you're going to be um, up for proposing this, but just out of curiosity, are there any other project ideas that you would be interested in seeing for GSOC that aren't on the list yet or not proposed yet? So I would, I would love to see further refinement of, or at least an investigation of the GitHub checks uh, okay. checks experience that went last year went surprisingly well yeah. and it may be that it's already done but you know it may be so well so so complete my suspicion though is usually projects from google summer of code would ju would justify a supplemental project the next time uh, custom distribution server is another one that Slayton's work last year was a, was an excellent beginning but to get all the way to production would need more work and, and so that's another candidate where you say, hey, if we want to do custom distributions, we need more work and, and Google Summer of Code is a great place to do that work. Yeah, yeah, the scope, um, like the project for custom distribution service is, is, was huge, like for, for a single GSOC. Uh, so but like we, even the team realized we couldn't quite get it complete, that huge piece of work completed in an entire, you know, um, entire, entire session uh, of, of GSOC. So maybe, yeah, maybe this time around, um, I can discuss with Christian, maybe we can put it up uh, this year as well. Because it has some technologies that the current, you know, generation of coders like React, it has, has pretty, it has pretty cool stuff. So yeah, it's a, it's a good idea. Nice, I like React. Um, the deadlines to apply for GSOC as an organization, not for the students, but as an organization are the 19th of February. So we would need to see it in the next two weeks. Yeah, so could you remind us of the various timeline pieces? That's one that, okay, February 19, we submit, we, we, we submit our final proposal as a project to Google Summer of Code. That's about the time that the students start their, that the students are allowed to submit project ideas then. What, what's the next deadline for the students? No, so we, we submit as an organization with our project ideas and the proposed ideas. And then the organizations which are chosen um, from Google as part of the GSOC program are announced on March 9th. Um, and at that point, students begin discussing with project ideas with um, the accepted mentor organizations. However, in practice, uh, we will continue to have these office hours and we really, uh, we welcome your participation and, and developing the ideas that you're interested in and answering your questions and becoming more familiar with the project. Um, and then after March 9th, a uh, student application period is from March 29th until April 13th. So at that point, students register and submit their applications. Okay, so the, so the, the actual window of time that Google allows is about two weeks is all, two or three weeks where they say, submit your applications during this. So we're, we're already in the prep period and we'll be in the prep period now and we'll continue preparing up until application time. Okay. Yes, but application time is, the, the final applications from students are April 13th. So there is, okay. there is some time <laughs> from a student perspective. Right. But, so right. it's good to be engaged now. You're definitely like well on schedule, it's good. And then of course, Google's gonna review them and then the student projects are announced themselves on May 17th. And then the actual, the actual development starts, is it end of May? What's? No, then there's a, this is a multi-stage process. So then community bonding is from May 17th until June 7th. Hmm. And then the coding period is from June 7th to August 16th. Got it. Um, Thank you. Kara, can you please explain a little bit about community bonding? What that actually it is? I mean, what I mean. Yeah. In many ways, it's um, it's what you're doing now. <laughs> you're just at the very early stages of it, so you get to know the community, the community's norms, and more about the project. But you do so with both uh, yourself as the student and the organization knowing that you will be moving forward into the coding phase. So it's, it's a little bit more directed, uh, more engaged. You'll be meeting with your mentor and um, getting ready for the coding phase. Yeah, so we, at least for me, the, the success pattern was we met twice a week with our student during community bonding. 
and we mm -hmm. we expected that they would achieve certain results at every one of those meetings and if they didn't it was sort of a red flag and so so community bonding is much more intense for me than the than than these you know here we meet once a week and it's a whole mm -hmm. group there it's twice a week and a team of two or three or four mentors focused on you as the student assuring that you're successful in getting ready to start coding at the official beginning is beginning of coding yeah that yeah and so the coding is from the beginning of june until mid august but your amount of hours as we were saying uh, earlier your amount of hours that you're expected to do as a student are reduced this year um so for student applicants you should know that if you if you still have exams or you have something you need to do in the summer you can discuss this with your mentors and the time is literally built into the program to enable you to say i need to take this week off or i need you know the first week uh, i'm still finishing up my schoolwork w whatever that is for you we can work out your schedule the only hard and fast ones from google's perspective is the halfway the first evaluations um are in mid July and you do need to have made significant progress it's pretty close yeah. to the halfway mark. And that's when your first payment, I think is released as well, if your evaluations go well. So, um, you can't, you can't say, I can't do anything for the first half. I will do it all in the second half that that wouldn't work from, from uh, Google's perspective, basically. Yeah, that's a good explanation. Thanks. Yeah. Plus Layden. <laughs> Are there any more questions on creating your applications as students? <laughs> Just want to make sure that that's that you feel well placed to do that, that you have no outstanding questions. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm just excited to work hard again. I mean, I'll just as soon as um, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, after exams. <laughs> Great. Cara, I think it, it sounds like we're done then. I propose we call an end. Thanks okay. very much, Sagar. Thanks, Nilma. Rick, thank you very much as well. Looking forward to interaction. Thank you, Mark. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye.